Chapter 6. Uh-oh. My eyes opened and I could see the sun behind the branch of a Christmas tree. I jumped up, folded my blanket inside my suitcase and hit it and started running the six or seven blocks down to the mission. I turned the corner and whew, there were still people lined up waiting. I started walking along the line. The end was a lot farther away than I thought. The line turned all the way around two corners, then crossed over one street before I saw the last person. Shucks, I walked up to get behind him. He said, line's closed. These here folks are the last ones. He pointed to a band standing next to a woman who was carrying a baby. I said, but sir. He said, but nothing. Line's closed. These here folks are the last ones. It was time to start lying. If I didn't get any food now, I'd have to steal something out of someone's garbage, or I wouldn't be able to eat until the mission opened for supper. I said, sir, I... The man raised his hand and said, Look, kid, everybody's got a story and everybody knows the rules. The line closes at 7 o'clock. How's it fair to these people who've been here since 5 o'clock that you can sleep until? He looked at his wristwatch. Until 7.15, then come busting down here expecting to eat. You think just because you got some special privilege, just because you're skinny and raggedy? Look in the line. There's lots of folks look just like you. You ain't the worst. Supper starts at 6 p.m., but you see how things is. If you plan on getting fed, you better be in line by four. Now get out of here before I get rough with you. Shucks, being hungry for a whole day is about as bad as it can get. I said, but he reached in his pocket and pulled something out that looked like a heavy black strap and slapped it across his hand. Uh-oh, here we go again. He said, that's it. No more talk. You open your mouth one too many you rotten kids today don't listen to no one, but I'm going to show you something that will improve your hearing. He slapped the strap on his hand and started walking toward me. I was wrong when I said being hungry for a day is about as bad as it can get. Being hungry plus having a big knot in your head from black leather strap would be even worse. I backed away but only got two steps before I felt a giant warm hand wrapped around my neck from behind. I looked up to see whose doggone hand was so big and why they put it around my neck. A very tall, square-shaped man in blue overalls looked down and said, Clarence, what took you so long? I got ready to say my name's not Clarence, and please don't choke me, sir, I'll leave. But as soon as I opened my mouth, he gave my head, my head a shake and said, I told you to hurry back. Now, where you been? He gave me a shove and said, get back in line with your mama. I looked up and down the line to see who was supposed to be my mama when a woman pointed her finger at her feet and said, Clarence, you get over here right now. There was two little kids hanging on to her skirt. I walked over to where she was, and she gave me a good hard smack on the head. Oh, boy, for someone who was just pretending to be my mama, she sure did slap me a good one. I said, ow! The big square man who grabbed my neck looked at the man with the strap and said, boy, I had to go use the crapper. I told him not to waste time, but like you said, these kids today don't listen to nobody. The strap man looked at the size of the man who called me Clarence and walked back to the end of the line. When the overall man got back in line, I said, thank you, sir. I really tried to get, but he popped me in the back of the hide hard and said, Next time, don't be gone so long. The two little kids busted out laughing and said, Nani, 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 Clarence got a lick and Clarence got a lick and I told them, Shut up and don't call me, but then both my pretend mama and my pretend papa smacked my head. She looked at the people direct behind and said, Oh, when they get to be this age... The people weren't too happy about me taking cuts in the line, but when they looked at how big my pretend daddy was, they saw how hard him and my mo pretend mama were going upside my head, and they decided they wouldn't say anything. I was grateful to these people, but I wish they'd quit popping me in the head, and it seems like with all the names in the world, they could have come up with a better one for me than Clarence. I stood in line with my pretend family for a long, long time. Everybody was very quiet about standing in line, even my pretend brother and sister and all the other kids. When we finally got around the last corner and could see the door and folks going in, it seemed like a bubble busted and people started laughing and talking. The main thing people were talking about was a great big sign that was hanging over the building. It showed a gigantic picture of a family of four rich white people sitting in a car driving somewhere. You could tell it was a family because they all looked exactly alike. The only difference among them was that the daddy had a big head and a hat and the mama had the same head was a woman's hat and the girl had two yellow pigtails coming out from above her ears. They all had big shiny teeth and big shiny eyes and big shiny cheeks and big shiny smiles. Shucks, you need to squint your eyes if that shiny family drove anywhere near you. You could tell they were rich because the car looked like it had room for eight or nine more people in it and because they had movie star clothes on. 
The woman was wearing a coat with a hunk of fur around the neck, and the man was wearing a suit and tie, and the kids looked like they were wearing $10 a piece jackets. Read about their car in fancy letters, it said, There's no place like America today. My pretend daddy in Reddit said, Uh, 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 well, you gotta give them credit. You won't expect that they'd have the nerve to come down here and tell the truth. When we finally got into the building, it was worth the wait. The first thing you noticed when you got inside was how big the place was and how many people were in it and how quiet it was. The only sound you could hear was when someone scraped a spoon across the bottom of their bowl or pulled a chair in or put one back or when people in front of you dragged their feet on the floor, moving up to where they were spooning out the food. After we picked up our spoons and bowls, a lady dug a big mess of oatmeal out of a giant pot and swapped it down in our bowls. She smiled and said, I hope you enjoy. Me and my pretend family all said, thank you, ma'am, then put two pieces of bread and a big and an apple and a big glass of milk on your tray and said, please read the signs to your children. Thank you. We all said, thank you, sir. Then we walked past some signs. Some stuck up on the wall. One said, please do not smoke. Another said, please eat as quickly and quietly as possible. Another one said, please be considerate and patient. Clean up after yourself. Your neighbors will be eating after you. And the last one said, we are terribly sorry, but we have no work available. My pretend daddy read the signs to my pretend brother and sister, and we all sat at a long table with strangers on both sides of us. The oatmeal was delicious. I poured some milk into it so it wouldn't be so lumpy and mixed it all together. My pretend mother opened her pocketbook and took out a little brown envelope. She reached inside of it and sprinkled something on my pretend brother and sister's oatmeal and then said to them, I know that's not as much as you normally get, but I wanted to ask you if you mind sharing some of Clarence. They pouted and gave me a couple of dirty looks. My pretend mother said good and emptied the rest of the envelope over my oatmeal. Brown sugar. Shucks, I didn't even mind calling me Clarence anymore. I said, thank you, Mama. Ma'am. She and my pretend daddy laughed, and he said, it took you long enough to catch on, Clarence. He acted like he was going to smack me again, but he didn't. After we'd finished all our food, we put our bowls up, and I thanked my pretend family again. I asked him, are you going to be coming back for supper? My pretend mama said, no, dear, we only come here mornings, but you sure you may get you plenty early, you hear? I said, yes, mama, I mean, ma'am. I watched them walking away. My pretend brother looked back at me and stuck out his tongue, then reached up and took my pretend mother's hand. I couldn't really blame him. I don't think I'd be real happy about sharing my brown sugar and my folks with any strange kids either.